What's up, Yans guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, we're going to talk about winterizing your rod and reel combinations. Now, here in the great state of Pennsylvania, we're in late November, heading right into the winter months. So while most of you guys are out there in the woods chasing Bambi, some of us as anglers are starting to think about winding our season down and really what we need to do to prep our gear to get through winter. So in this episode, we're going to cover a few tips and tricks that will help you guys winterize your gear, and hopefully this will help you guys to extend the overall life of your gear as well. So hopefully you guys find this information beneficial. Let's go ahead and jump right into the discussion. Okay guys, the first step to winterizing your rod and reel combinations. The very first thing that I do with my combos, like this Silver Max, is basically detach the reel from the rod. Now the reason for that, it has to do with the amount of stress or pressure that leaving a tight reel to the rod can cause over long term. That stress or that tension can actually loosen or bend the reel seat on the rod. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna cause your reel to be just a little bit loose on that rod. So the best way to deal with that is just to simply unscrew your reel from your rod, tighten up your line, and then set these separately aside so we can package them for later. All right guys, the second step to winterization has to do with reels specifically. Now I have an Abu Silver Max reel here, if you guys can see that. This is what you're gonna wanna do for your bait cast reels. Now, the first thing is to loosen up the drag. In addition to that, we want to loosen up the cast control cap. Now, the reason for that has to do with the amount of pressure and stress that a tight drag and a tight control cap will put on the reel. It's always good to loosen those up when you're done fishing. However, for the long haul for the winter months, it's always good to throttle those back to loosen it up to make sure that there's not a lot of pressure on that reel. That's gonna help extend the life of your equipment, especially through winter. All right guys, the third step in the winterization process. This is gonna work for both your rod and your reel. So I have some denatured alcohol wipes here. And basically what you wanna do with these wipes, you wanna open these guys up, and you just wanna make sure you give your rod and your reel a good wipe down. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna basically start with my reel. I'm gonna wipe all the debris off. I'm gonna clean this up really good because there's a lot of gunk on here in general. And once you get these nice and clean, you can move on to your rod. So you wanna take and you wanna do the same thing with your rod. You wanna wipe this down. And if you have cork, you wanna focus on the cork and wipe the cork down as well. Loosening up any mud or debris or anything that's on there, giving your equipment a quick cleaning, again, can go a long way to preserving the overall health of that equipment through its life expectancy. All right, guys, the next tip for you. When you have reels, it's always important to oil them. Oil is going to allow this thing to function properly. How many times have I burned out a reel because I wasn't regularly oiling them? I can tell you it's happened to me once or twice, if not three times in my fishing career. So it's always important for you guys to focus on oiling your reels. Now I have some Abu Garcia oil here. And basically with the bait casters like this, whether they're, they're uh, round or they're slimline like this, um, every reel is gonna have a metal bar on the back of it. So hopefully you guys can see that. Now what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna take your oil and you're gonna wanna loosen the cap and you're just gonna wanna sprinkle a little bit of oil in there and then maybe pull some line out and just give it a few reels. Pull some line, give it a few reels. If you guys do that, especially heading into winter, I can't stress this enough. This process is to extend the life of your equipment. And oiling your reel is gonna go a long way to preserving the health of it long term. All right guys, last step in the process for the reel. I have my reel, it's all cleaned, it's oiled, it's ready to go. For about $5, you guys can go to your local bait shop or maybe a Bass Pro Shops and pick up a reel cover. Now a reel cover is super easy, they're super cheap, and it's a great way to protect your equipment throughout the winter. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tuck my reel in the cover. These are neoprene, so they stretch very, very easily. 
they offer good protection and that's it so i have my reel in the cover and now what i'm going to do with this i'm going to take it i'm going to put it into a waterproof container to keep out the moisture and i'm just going to store it in a warm dry location and now i know come march this reel is going to operate 100 percent effectively for me when i pull it out of the box and i'm ready to go back out and hit the water all right guys let's talk about a few tips concerning your rod now we already talked about taking the reels off loosening the reel seats we talked about cleaning the core cleaning the rod one other thing you guys can do is you can take your rods and you can expect your eyelets or inspect all the guides all the way up and down the rod now this particular rod everything looks pretty good this one's a little bent you can move that back down this one looks good that one looks good however I noticed that the top guide was damaged. So what I did here was I went ahead and I replaced this. Now I glued a new one on. It's got the new rubber piece in the middle so it's not gonna cause my line to fray any longer. But if you guys take the time to inspect your rod and your guides, it's gonna give you an opportunity to fix issues with them. And all that's gonna allow you to do is gonna get ahead of the curve and make sure this is equipment is ready to go for winter and it'll be ready to go for the first time you guys take it out maybe in March time frame. All right guys, now that we have our rod here, we took the reel off, which basically takes all the stress off the seat. We cleaned it really good with alcohol. We cleaned uh, the cork, we cleaned the rod. We inspected the guides, so everything looks good. We corrected issues there. Now the, the next tip for you guys when storing this thing, make sure you guys are either storing it vertically like this, in the air, or horizontally on the ground. A lot of guys will come into their garage and they'll take their fishing rods and they'll throw it into a corner and lean it up against the wall like that. However, throughout the winter months, if your rod stays bent up against the wall, what that could do is it could cause this thing to bend permanently. And you guys want nice straight rods in order to be effective when you're out there fishing. Plus, we don't want that bend to create any damage or weak links in the rod. So it's always important for you guys to take your rods, you guys pay a lot of money for these things, store them vertically or store them horizontally, and that'll extend the life of the equipment, not only through winter, but it'll make sure you're ready to go come March of next year. Okay guys, last tip for you. If you guys have graphite rods, it's critically important that you understand that they do not do well in extreme cold. So it's important for you guys to store your graphite rod and reel combinations in a warm and dry place. If you do not and you expose this to the cold in a garage or a shed, what could potentially happen is you could have the graphite crack, you could have it bend, or you could have issues with the epoxy that's up and down this. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna create damage and it's gonna make this thing unusable. So, stored in a warm, dry location, it's gonna preserve the life of your equipment. In addition to that, for about five or less than 10 bucks, you guys can go out to Walmart or you can go out to Gander Mountain in Greensburg. You can go out to wherever sells these rod socks. And this rod sock is a great tool for you guys to implement over top of your equipment in order to keep this thing safe. This is gonna protect the guides. It's gonna protect the, the rod itself. Um, how many times do I carry these through my house and hit the ceiling? It protects the equipment and it really just helps us kind of slide off of things. Plus, it'll help you keep everything organized. You're not gonna have any tangles or anything with your equipment if you leave the reels on. So, you know, these are just awesome little tools to add onto your rods and it just gives you another layer of security or another layer of protection. So rod socks, storing it in a warm, dry location is gonna preserve the overall life of your fishing rod. All right, boys and girls, hopefully you guys found this information beneficial. It's critically important to take good care of your gear. If you guys winterize and you prep your gear for that long haul through winter, it's only gonna extend the life expectancy of your equipment. I know I keep harping on that. I know I keep repeating it, but you guys pay a lot of money for this equipment and it's important to take care of it. If you guys take care of your gear, your gear will take care of you whenever you hook that big one next spring. If you guys like this video, go and hit that like button for me. If you guys like the content overall, please subscribe to my channel. All right guys, tight lines, see you next time.